Hey, welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk to you about HTMX. It is quite hyped in the internet for the past month and I want to give you a short introduction and also my point of view about how it will be used and adapted by the community in the future. So if you are a backend developer, you probably know the issue that you need to update some APIs just that the front end can update some state in their application. Wouldn't it be more handy if you can directly send the HTML to the front end and it will be displayed? You don't need the interaction with the front end team at all. The problem here is that there are multiple stakeholders involved into aligning how the data should be sent between the front end and the back end, what data exactly are needed and how to update then the UI afterwards. Maybe you are also familiar with the concept of hate OS. It was introduced in 1999 and was the concept how you can map out all the possible next states. So the whole idea was that you have one entry point with JSON and in the bottom part all the next possibilities you can go. For example, you load to-dos and on each to-do you have the link property with delete, edit and set it to done. But this has multiple flaws. For example, the JSON itself does not specify if it's a put, a get or a delete request. So you need to have some more information. But with HTMX you have real hate OS. You send the HTML as a response and inside the HTML everything is already set. How you can interact with the endpoints. I don't think that HTMX will replace React, Vue or any other big web framework, but it could be a nice alternative if you have a basic website, you need just to update some properties, you just need to show some stuff and you want to have it as an MVP or a really simple solution. Currently we also have the issue that these web frameworks are really bloated, you need to have like really deep knowledge about it. But, and if you are just a backend developer who is using JSP or JSF or Mustache or any other frameworks already for quite some time, you are quite familiar with the concepts of HTML and the backend. And with HTMX, you can have real interactivity in your HTML without adding a new framework to it. Let me show you an example of how you can use it. Okay, I hope you also got yourself a nice cup of coffee and let's take a look at HTMX in action. So first of all, this is the website I built just now and uh, like a little front end to show you how HTMX is working. So what we have is basically just some, some plain HTML with Tailwind. And as we can see here, we have the current timestamp. So we have some news. So these are the headlines of the news and we can also show details for the view news and we can reload and we see, okay, the counter is updated and that's basically it. So let's take a look at first HTMX. So we don't want to write JavaScript, but HTMX itself is basically JavaScript. So you just inject it and it takes a look at your HTML and hooks itself to the tags you set on the HTML. So for example, you have the HX post and this tells HTMX that it should attach itself to the button, the on click should be a post and the response should be swapped with the outer HTML. So this whole thing will be swapped for the response the server is sending. And this is the whole thing. I mean, you can take a look at the documentation. It looks quite nice and it's really small. It's just 14K gzipped. So it can reduce the whole page quite a lot. Yes, the initial page load may be a bit bigger than plain HTML because you also need the HTMX and maybe some tailwind, but the whole thing will be reduced in the future on every request because the request is just responding with the HTML that is needed. The HTML itself could be a bit bigger than the pure JSON, but we all know the situation where the server response is sending us a big JSON with like tons of data we don't need. We just extract a few data points and show them and it would be way handier to just let the server response with the HTML that we directly can show. Yeah, I, I use Mustache in this example. It's a quite sophisticated templating engine. Uh, you can use it in many different languages. It works quite well and we can use it in Kotlin directly. Uh, I use Ktor in this example because yeah, it is really simple to set up. Also, I love Kotlin compared to Java especially. I just wanted to get started really simple and plain and let's take a look at the code. So as we saw, 
this is the, the result. So in the code, we have very little stuff going on. So we have basically three endpoints, the slash, so the base URL, the news URL and the news ID URL. In the base URL, we just respond with the HTML. So let's take a look at the index HBS. So this is the mustache file. Um, in here, we define the HTMX script. We define Tailwind.js just because I want to use it in this part. And we also define our like welcome message, so the hello and the username. And the next thing is the important part, on load. So HX trigger is on load. We send a get request to the news endpoint and swap it with the outer HTML. So this diff will be swapped with the response of the server. And if we take a look at the network request here, we see it as well. We have the slash, the base URL with the plain HTML. And this one triggers the news request. So the news request, and this one is the filled HTML again. So let's take a look at the news request. So we have in the templating, the news request, it just increases a counter just to see how often the news endpoint was called while the server is running. We get the current timestamp of the server, format it and give this to the mustache engine. So all the news as a list, the current timestamp and the counter. And let's take a look at the mustache file of the news. We have the current timestamp, we have the current count, how often the news are loaded. And we also have like for each news, we just create a list entry with the news itself. And we also add a button that is basically on click because the HX get is on a button. It means on click, it will send a get request to the news endpoint, like the details with one, two, three, usually we would enter like an ID or something and it swaps the outer HTML. So basically it swaps the button itself. And if we take a look at the news endpoint with the details, we just respond with the parameter ID as like, these are the details for news. So usually we could do like a request or send the real news details or whatever. And we render this into the details mustache file. And this one is just a p-tag with details. If we take a look at the result, we have like headline one, details. If we click it, we see one, two, three is loaded and it just sends a p-tag. And if we now take a look at the HTML file, it says, okay, here is the p-tag with the news and the button is gone. So here we have the button still in it. So if we click the button, we see it will be replaced with the p-tag. Yeah. And that's basically it for getting started. You can also have logic in it, for example, loading logic. So let's say you want to show like a really small loading indicator while the website is loading. You can just add like some SVG with the class HTMX indicator. So this one will be shown while loading. In this case, I just set like to slow 3G to simulate like really slow network. And if you click it, you see you have a loading indicator and then the response will be set as soon as the response is received. So yeah, that's basically it for a really simple HTMX application. I think this is like really handy if you want to have a small website running. If you have like a team with a lot of backend engineers, they need to set up some front end for the backend. I think this could be really handy for companies or startups that have quite a lot of backend engineers, they need to get started. I think this has quite a bright future and I will use it for sure. For me, it feels really, really natural to have this templating engine with some true HeyOS capabilities. That's it for today and I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.